praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. And praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. I'll praise when surrounded.
control, church. He's in control. It may look like chaos all around us, but our God is still in control. He knows the beginning and the end and everything in between it, and we just praise his name. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, God. We praise you, Jesus. up Israel to you right now and God we stand together as a church and pray for the peace of Jerusalem your word tells us to stand on that and to pray for peace over that land Lord we know that they are your people and God we ask for protection over them right now Lord that your hand would just go between these attacks Lord that you would stand with them and guard them and keep them. And God, may America, the United States, never forsake them, oh God. But we would stand with them throughout the times, Lord. That we would stand, Lord, when it seems hard, when it seems bad. Lord, that we as a church would lift them up daily before your throne. Oh God, we pray for Israel right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for protection for your people, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for the remnant of people, God, that you're saving. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray these things. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy, worthy God. Worthy Jesus. Oh, he's omnipotent. Hallelujah. We're no longer slaves because he who the Son has set free is free indeed. And we can stand on that promise today. Whatever it is, you're going to be free. You are free indeed. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Amen. All right, don't go anywhere. Stay where you're at. See. Go right. Go back to that right there. Just the bridge. Hallelujah. Praise. Is that the name of that song? Praise. Praise. I praise when I'm uh, that one. Yeah. Uh, while they were doing that. I was kind of looking around at everybody instead of worshiping like I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> Psalm 146 through 150. So 146, 147, 148, 149, 150. For all you teachers out there, there's nothing wrong with counting on your fingers. Okay? So five, the last five Psalms start like this. Praise ye the Lord. They end like this. Praise ye the Lord. All five of them. Now when you get to 150, this is what it says. It says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. That's where we're at. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Whatever that means. Praise him for his mighty deeds. We all know he's done great things for us. Amen. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the trumpet sound, which we don't have. Praise him with the harp and with the lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Okay. Hang on just a minute, Kyle. Well, you're a stringed instrument. Keep playing. You just, it's not real. It's its manufactured stringed instrument. Uh, so, it says, praise him with the stringed instruments. One, two, three, four, five. Start playing. Just play. What's that chord you're playing? E flat. E flat? B flat. B flat. Just play B flat. Just play. Everybody come a little louder. A little louder than that. That's the stringed instruments. Amen? All right. Keep playing. Don't stop. All right. It says, praise him with the symbols. A little louder, Josiah. Now, it says praise him with the resounding symbols. Okay, quiet down just a minute. Hang on. Now, I didn't know what resounding meant. So, while y'all were probably wondering, what's he doing? I was looking it up. Resounding means loud. I didn't, I just, I, I was going to say resounding means let it ring out for a long time. But according to Google, it means loud. So praise him. You gotta start playing again. Just start playing. Now play loud. All right. Now it says the last thing it says is let everything that has breath. That's me, you, everything that has breath. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah! Worthy is the Lord! Worthy, worthy is the Lord! Hallelujah, hallelujah! Worthy, worthy! Worthy, worthy! 
worthy, worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy is the Lord. Great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy, worthy. Ah, right, one more time. I praise God, your sovereign. Go ahead, Shannon. that means don't go far it's not only so far you can't go so go we're gonna get back up here in just a few minutes y'all just hang tight up here uh worship team if y'all don't mind i won't i promise i won't take long it's like that's what pastor mike says so let's start it off this way um how many of you I, I'm a, I dream a lot at night. I'm, a, I'm a, one of those people that when I sleep, I dream a lot. Kelly says it's because I sleep a lot. Uh, and I, I mean, when my head hits the pillow, I'm asleep. I mean, it doesn't take me but just a moment. I'm, I'm in a coma. Uh, but I dream, I dream a lot. I have crazy dreams. I have dreams that are pretty cool. I have, you know, just who knows, you know, pizza dreams. That's what they call them. Pizza. That's, that's the best seat you got. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just picking. Uh, they want to, I, I don't mean to call you out, Eliza, but uh, I have all all kind of dreams. How many people dream? Dream? Just you're, you're a dreamer. You dream a lot. Okay. Uh, so, how many of you have like uh, like most most of your dreams are of just crazy? They don't make any sense when you wake up there. Just, uh, just, come on, man. Uh, me and Tracy was talking about that, or no, me and Chris was talking about the rhetorical question thing, so I don't really know what rhetorical means, so these are the ones you can answer. So, if you dream a lot and they're, they're nonsense dreams, raise your hand. Just raise your hand. It's okay. I, that's most of what I have, nonsense dreams. How many of you have dreams that when you wake up, they just give you, just have a good feeling? You have a good feeling, man. It just makes you feel good, man. Just man, that was so real. It was neat, you know. How many of you have scary dreams? I have a few of those sometimes. Yep. Uh, wake up, and you, you, you know. How many of you have those dreams that when you're falling and you whoop, wake up right before you? I don't know what. I wonder what that means. I wish I was. I don't. I don't know, and I'm scared to ask. So, uh, how many about? What about dreams that maybe the Lord's given you? How many have dreams that you, you really feel like God's given you? Okay, about something or you know, whatever, whatever it is. Now let's kind of let's kind of move from dreams as far as when you're asleep, dreams, REM sleep, dreams, whatever that all that is. How many of how many of you have dreams that are not really I'm asleep dreams, but man, God's really back when my kids were young. God really spoke to me, and, and I know 
there was, they were going to be in the ministry or there were things they were going to do in life that I really believe God showed me that or spoke to them individually. However, how many of you have had, have, have had that? Really, that's all? Okay, fair enough. How many of you have, have had dreams, and I'm not talking about fill asleep dreams, I'm talking about things that you really feel like God has uh, placed in your heart or, or, you know, spoken to you that you were going to do, that you were going to see happen maybe, okay? Most of us probably, if we were real with ourselves, uh, how many of you have had experiences where you... Well, well, let's put it this way. How many of you have lost loved ones? Uh, every one of us. You know, I mean, I'm pretty sure every one of us can say we have uh, family members or, or people we know that are lost. One of the things, that's a dream. I, I, when I'm, I'm not talking about a sleep dream. I, my dream is to see certain family members. Well, not certain ones. That's kind of picking and choosing. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, I am a little carnal sometimes. So, But uh, certain our family members... You want to see them saved. You want to see them healed, delivered, set free, and live the same life that you, you know, that we try to live that, that's godly, and we try to be, you know, we, we, we try to live for the Lord the best we know how. We want to see that stuff happen. Uh, and, and for all of you that have been members here for a little while, how many of you know that there's been promises and dreams spoken over this, this church itself, the, the establishment, this church? Yeah, sure, we, we all know that. Uh, and that's kind of what I want to I want to talk about today a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna uh, gonna gonna just talk about some things like that, and those things that have gone dormant. You know those those dreams in our lives, those expectations, those uh, hopes, those those things that we really believe that God has has, has He's spoken into our lives, and this is this is what your future is going to be. And maybe it's not that right now. Maybe that dream that you're carrying around is just laying dormant in your, in your being or, or whatever. It's just there. It's not, it's not alive anymore. You're just carrying around an old dead dream. You know, maybe you're just carrying around a, just an old dream that's... That, and you, you, I hope today... Here's what I hope. Some of you, a bunch of you didn't raise your hand on things. And that's okay. That's not... That's okay. That, but what I hope today does is remind you of some of those things. That you'll, you'll be sitting there before we leave or maybe when you get home or whatever you go, oh, man, I, didn't, I had forgotten all about that. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me. Not, not anything I've said, but when you get home, maybe the Lord just speaks to you and goes, you remember when I told you this? Oh, yeah. This is what, that's what I hope. I hope today that kind of stuff happens because we all have things from... I mean, if you've been saved, and even if you haven't, God speaks to you. When he starts trying to woo you, which is from birth, when he starts trying to woo you and bring you into his kingdom, he starts spe speaking things into your life. And sometimes we go through life 30 years later, and no, I'm not 30. That's when I got saved. 30 years later, uh, those things just lay dormant, you know. It's okay to laugh, man. Y'all you know, need to relax a little bit, okay? Relax. Y'all making me nervous. <laughs> making me nervous. Uh, those things just are dormant, dead. Sometimes you don't even remember they're there, you know. So, Joseph in the Bible is known as a dreamer. He's known as the dreamer. If you look up the heading, it says Joseph. If you've got a Bible that has headings before each, they start talking about people, Joseph the dreamer, a lot of cases. So Joseph was 17 years old, and he, he had these dreams about his family, about his brothers. He had, I don't remember how many brothers, I can't remember how many brothers he had, seven? No, he had, there was 12 tribes of Israel, so he had 11. 11. Thought y'all had me, didn't you? He had 11 brothers. So he... He would have these dreams about his mom and dad and his, and his brothers, and, his, and he was the, the baby. How many babies in the family? It's pretty awesome, isn't it? It's pretty awesome. So he had these dreams about his, his mom and dad 
and, it, and his uh, brothers and, you know, things like that. The moon and the stars, or the moon and the sun would bow down, the stars would bow down. And, of course, his brothers didn't like that. You know, they didn't, they didn't care for that. So uh, they were, you know, their plot was we got, we got to get rid of this guy, you know. And uh, they sold him, or they were going to sell him into, or, or put him, throw him in a pit. And, of course, Big Brother Reuben spoke up and said, man, let's, hey, man, let's don't kill him. You know, let's just sell him into slavery. That would be a lot better. So they did all of that. And anyway, I'm not going to, I'm going to kind of go through this part kind of fast. So Joseph is known as the dreamer. I just want to establish that, that he's known in the Bible as a dreamer. He, he, gets, he goes through his life. He, they, the Ishmaelites take him into slavery or take him to Egypt and sell him. Uh, let's see what else happens. He gets, uh, he, he gets promoted, and then he goes into, then he gets uh, Potiphar's wife, accuses him of some stuff, throw him in jail in prison, and then he has some dreams in there. So he's established. We're established that part. He's a dreamer, okay? He's the Joseph the dreamer. That's the dream. Hold on to that. Joseph is the dream, okay? Uh, so later on, we go through life, and or they go through life, and, and Joseph tells his, his family, he says, look, uh, he said to his brothers, I'm about to die. But God will surely take care of you and bring you up from this land and to the land which he promised an oath to, to, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely take care of you and care, uh, God will surely take care of you and you shall carry my bones from here. So Joseph died at the age of 110 and he was embalmed and placed in a coffin in Israel. Or in uh, Egypt. So let's fast forward a little bit. Time goes by. Bible, you know, it talks about about four about four hundred years that the Israelites are in in uh, captivity in in Egypt. So time time rocks on, and it, and and God raises up a deliverer named Moses uh, to lead the people out of out of out of uh, bondage in Egypt. So we know most of us know these stories. You know about, about the ten plagues. And, and finally, Pharaoh says, okay, I'm going to let y'all go. So uh, Moses, before he leaves, he says this. He says, uh, this is, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely take care of you, and you shall carry my bones here with you. So remember this. I don't try to tie this together. I hope it makes sense. Jo Moses is about to deliver or lead the people out of Egypt. And before he leaves, he remembers this, this uh, that Joseph had said, hey, when y'all leave. And he didn't just say, you know, it wasn't one of those things. Man, if y'all ever get out of here, take me with you. I know I'm going to be dead and all of that kind of stuff. But man, if y'all if ever, ever get out of Egypt, take me with you. That's not what he said. He said, when, when he had a dream, still, this is going to happen. When y'all are delivered out of Egypt and out of bondage and out of slavery, don't leave me here. Take me with you. So Moses remembered that. He, got the, he took the bones of, of Joseph. And I kind of tried to figure out how they... I, I looked up some things and how they might have transported these bones or whatever. And the best thing, or the, one of the only things I could find, I don't know how accurate this is. This is just one of the things I, I found, that they more than likely carried them in a cart, some kind of a cart, like, almost like they would have carried the Ark of the Covenant. But it would have, was a little small cart, and they had the bones of Joseph in that cart. So think about that. A cart with bones in it. All these people... We're leaving Egypt. We're gone. We're out of here. So Moses delivers the people, or he leads the people out of Egypt. God delivers the people out of Egypt, and, he, and they're, they're, they're on their way. All right. Now, how many of y'all can snap? Let me hear you snap. Okay. That's pretty good. A lot better than I can. Okay, you stop now, Shannon. That's good. Uh, so Moses delivers or leads his people, God delivers them. Moses leads the people out of Egypt. So there, Pharaoh says, hey, the last plague, you know, happens. The first born's killed. That was the last 
you know, Pharaoh says, look, take them. Y'all go. Get out. Get out of Egypt. Leave. So Moses gathers, gathers the people. One of the things I always thought about, I don't know how many there were, but they said, what, about 600,000 men? And not counting, man, I got this. <laughs> about 600,000 men, uh, so not counting women and children. I don't know, no telling, probably close to a million, maybe. So anyway, imagine Moses like, hey, y'all, let's go. You know, we're, we're leaving. So they leave Egypt. They're leaving Egypt. And Pharaoh done, he said, man, y'all get out of here. I, I just, you know, after that last plague, I'm not dealing with y'all anymore. Leave. So they get maybe out of sight. I don't really know. Maybe out of sight. The Bible says that God hardens the heart of Pharaoh again, and he, start, and he pursues them. Okay? So he's chasing them. They've, they've, been, they've left. They've got all these people. They're trying to, they're getting away. They think, it's just, hey, first of all, we're free. We can leave. So we're not in a, we don't have to run. We just, he, he told us to leave. So we're leaving. And then later on, they look back, and here comes Pharaoh and his army. Okay, so they get to the Red Sea. There's no, there's, there's no, way, no way around it. The only way is through it, and it, it's, you know, it's there. It's, it, there's the Red Sea. They can't go anywhere. So the first reaction of the people, of the children of Israel, is this. What would you do? Bring us, bring us out here to die? Now we're going to, you know, you, we, man, imagine being in captivity for 400 years, 400 years. Now, I know, you know, generations, you know, everybody wasn't there for 400 years, but for 400 years, that nation was in captivity. They're free, they get to the Red Sea, and their first reaction is, man, you should have just left us in Egypt. At least we had this, at least we had that. I wish you would have just left us in Egypt. Well, imagine being the leader of these people, trying to get them, you, you know, God has done all this miraculous stuff, Throw down your rod, snake, bam, pick it up, rod again. Uh, all of these things, the, the ten plagues, all of these things that happen. And the, your lead, the leader has seen this, Aaron has seen it. And you get to the Red Sea, and all you can hear, you know God, God told you this. God spoke to you out of a burning bush and said, look, I've got a, I've got a plan for you. This is what's going to happen. All right, and you get there, and all the people you're trying to lead are going, man, you just, you should have just left us back there. Man, we don't, we're, here we, now we're going to die. Pharaoh's army's going to kill us. Well, at least back there we had this, or we had that. And then all of a sudden, Moses is, he's frustrated. He's like, man. And I'm just, I'm, I'm guessing, surely he was. I mean, I would be frustrated and like, man, what's going on? Snap for me. Come on. There's a faint sound of something rattling. And it's Joseph's bones. Just a faint sound. I don't know where in the progression they were. I have no idea. They might have been right behind Moses. They might have been the last thing coming through. I don't know. It don't say. If it did, I didn't find it because I didn't look. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, it was, maybe he's right, the, the, that cart is right behind Moses. Maybe it's the last thing that comes through. So... Moses hears that one more time, snap. Y'all going to have to participate now. All right, faintly, he can faintly hear. What is that noise? Oh, oh yeah, that's that old dead dream I'm carrying. I can barely hear it. And he's like, okay. He's like, and then God speaks to him and says, hey, Moses. And, uh, and tells and gives him the instructions uh, pertaining to the Red Sea. The children of Israel go through. Then they celebrate. All is well. Woo! Thank the Lord. We're good to go. Uh-oh, they see them coming. Anyway, we know they get drowned in the Red Sea, the Pharaoh's army and all that. So that happens. Next thing, they're moving along pretty good. Uh, and I just jotted to, and this is not all by any means of what, these, what Moses had to deal with. It's just a few. So it said the people grumbled at Moses. This is in Exodus 15, 24. It says, the people grumbled at Moses, saying, they're thirsty, they don't have any water, and they're like, what shall we drink? We're going to die. We don't have any water. What shall we drink? Now, look, 
to sympathize a little bit with the children of Israel. If I don't have any water, I'm going to be grumbling too. I'm going to grumble myself. But poor old Moses, he's just trying to do the best he can. Poor fella can't talk anyway. He, you know, he has, he's, not a, he's not the best speaker in the world. That's why he's got Aaron. But the people are grumbling again. And he, you know, just about the time he wants to give up. Snap. Come on. He hears very, a very faint sound of those bones rattling. And he remembers the promise. You're going to get out of here. You're going, you're going to get out of here. Take me with you. Okay? So that's just one little incident. incident. Uh, later on, and this is, I just jotted them down. It's not in any kind of order or anything. It says, the sons of Israel said to them, Man, would it that we have died by the Lord's hand? Uh, in the land of Egypt, when we, uh, when we sat by the pots of meat, when we ate bread, we were full. For you have brought us into the wilderness to kill us, this whole assembly. All right, now think about this a minute. Josiah, wake up. I'm going to need you here in a minute. Think about this. Now, I know they're hungry, and, and, and I understand all that. Don't get me wrong. But you've been set free. How many of you have been set free? How many of you grumble? Keep them hands up. Don't put them down. Don't you put them hands down. We all grumble. We, they were set free. 400 years in bondage. They were delivered, set free. And look, they're like, look, man, at least if we'd have died in Egypt, we'd have died with a full belly basically what they're saying. We have, we had pots of meat. We had bread to eat. At least if we would have been left in Egypt, if you just left us alone, Moses, we would have, at least we'd have, we'd had a full belly. I like a full belly myself. Don't get me wrong. But just think, think, put yourself in Moses. He's doing all he knows to do. He's obeying the Lord the best he knows how. He's, he's trying with all he knows. You know, he makes mistakes just like we do. But he's trying. He's trying to get these people from Egypt to the promised land. And <clears throat> he, they, they're, they're, they're going and they're complaining again. And they're grumbling. And he's like, Lord, I don't, you know, was it, it, you know he had to think stuff like, okay, imagine this. You got about 50 people you're trying to get to do what you want them to do. And, 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 and they complain the whole time. Imagine this, about a million people. And, it says sometimes, and some of those, and we'll get to it, it says the whole assembly. I don't know what the whole assembly was, but I'm assuming that was everybody. Grumbled and complained. So he would get in the situation when things didn't go good, they, they would start complaining, and they grumbled. At least if you would have left, left us in Egypt, we'd have had meat to eat and bread to eat. And just about the time Moses is getting ready to give up, or he's just, he, you know, I don't, I'm not saying Moses ever wanted to give up, but you know he was frustrated. And like, Lord, I don't, what, what do I do? Go ahead. Those bones would get a little, they were a little bit louder. Those old jo Joseph's bones were starting to rattle a little bit louder. Man, and he, and it, it would refresh him. Stop. It would refresh him, and he would be like, man, I remember the promise. Do you see where I'm going with this? Okay, a lot of us have a dead dream that we're carrying around with us, something that's dormant, that, that our kids, our family, our ministry, or whatever it is, is there, and it's just dormant in our life. It's, 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 it, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to happen. And it may be, we may have even forgot about it. All right, let's do another one. Let's look here. Okay, which one did I just read? About the meat, wasn't it? Okay, here's another one. But the people thirsted for water and grumbled against Moses and said, Why now have you brought us up from Egypt to kill us, our children, and our livestock with thirst? Okay, let's read another one. We, we, we're going to go through this pretty quick. Then the Lord said to, uh, spoke to Moses. Okay, Mo, he, he, Moses goes up to the, to the mountain to, to, talk to talk to God and get some instruction from him. While he's up there, while he's up there, his right-hand man, 
Aaron, and all these people he's leading decide, look, we, we, don't, all, we don't have anything really. We, we need something to worship. So they built this gold. They, they formed, it says they brought Aaron, all their, the, the, the gold they had, and they, formed, they fashioned a golden calf. And they made this golden calf. So imagine Moses goes up, and he's getting instruction from the Lord. And he comes down. Well, actually, God tells him this. This is what God tells him. The Lord spoke to Moses, go down, go back down there where they're at, at once for your people. And I thought it was funny that God called them his people, not his. He called them Moses' people, your people, your kid. Uh, for your people whom you brought up from the land of Egypt. Egypt, like, like God's, almost, it's a, God's almost, I didn't have anything to do with this. <laughs> That's not really what he's saying, but you know what I mean. Your people from the land of Egypt, uh, let's see, lost my place. Uh, who you brought up from the lands of Egypt have corrupted themselves. So Moses goes back down again, all right? And what have they, you know he's thinking, what, what have y'all done? Y'all have seen a cloud protect y'all during the day. Keep, keep y'all cool from, from the desert's hot in the day. We know, we've been taught this from as long as we remember. The cloud by day, the fire by night to keep them warm. To, it would stop. When they stopped, they camped. When it moved, they moved with it. Uh, all of these things, y'all have seen this. Y'all have seen manna rain from heaven. You've seen God provide quail. You've seen, all, you've seen water come out of a rock. You've seen all of these things, but now... Yet you're going to make this golden calf to worship. When all, all this time, you've, you've seen the miracles of God. You've seen the Red Sea part. You've seen it fall, uh, go back and drown all the chariots and the men of, of Egypt. You've seen all of this. And here's what you're going to do. And Moses, you know, he's got to be, again, he's got to be frustrated. Amen? All right, Josiah. And then all of a sudden, they, they, that cart would move. Man. All of a sudden that cart would move and, and Moses would hear those bones rattling. Keep going. And, it, and he would think, I remember. I remember what Joseph said. Take me with y'all. That was a promise that meant it didn't mean take me with y'all and maybe we're going to get there. It means take me with you because when you get there, that's where I want to be. Amen? All right, you stop. Okay. I didn't bring you up here to steal my thunder, man. Okay? <laughs> then ain't too late, yeah. Then all the congregation lifted up their voices. This is another, just a little quick, quick um, out, out, of, out of Exodus. Then all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept all night, and all the sons of Israel all the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses uh, and Aaron and the whole congregation and said to them, Would that we have died in this land of Egypt, or would that we had died in the wilderness. Doesn't matter. We're going to die is what they're saying. Whether we die in Egypt, whether we die, it looks like we're going to die. Uh, why is the Lord bringing us into this land? Why is it, and this is a question. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land? To fall by the sword? So you're going to do all of this. This is what they're saying. Listen to how they're, they're, they're saying this. So you've, we've done all of this. Went through the Red Sea. All right? we, we escaped Egypt. Went through the Red Sea. Saved us there. We ate manna. We ate quail. We got water from a rock. We've seen all of this. We've seen Moses come down with his face shining so much we couldn't even look at him. He had to cover it. Uh, because he had been in the presence of God, we've seen all of this, and you're going all of this. Now we're gonna just get killed by the sword. We're gonna die anyway. All of this, we're still gonna die. And you know, I can't imagine it. How many of y'all? No, no, hang on. Let's see, I put this. Okay, no, we'll, I'll leave that alone. How many of y'all got some complaining kids? Every once in a while, just re every now and then, they complain a tad. Imagine you do all you can for them, all you can, and they complain a little bit. You know, you, you know. I'm not saying you know, you know what I mean, but you, it's frustrating, right? It's frustrating. I mean, if, we, if we'll be honest with ourselves, it's frustrating. So you got to remember, here's Moses trying to do all he knows how to do. Now he, like I said, he made mistakes. I understand that. 
He did make a few mistakes. He wasn't allowed to go into the promised land because of the, some, some mistakes he made. But here he is doing the best he can. And these guys, they just, they just grumble. Every time there's a little mishap, they grumble. Now, that's not, what I'm, that's not where I'm going. This is not what this is about. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Moses trying to get these people somewhere. And he gets frustrated. And after so long, you got to believe he's thinking, man, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. So I'm going to move to this last thing, or next to the last thing. So Moses sends the spies. They send them into to, uh, the promised land to spy out the land. Sends 12 of them. I told this, I was telling this one time, and uh, I, I said he sent, uh, sent 12 spies in there, and uh, eight came back with a, with a good report, and two came back with a negative report. And that's, I just left it at that. I, forget, I, I didn't realize the math didn't add up. I guess, the, I, was, I guess the other two just never came out, man. They, <laughs> too bad for them. They didn't make it. But uh, he sent in 12 spies, and, and 10 came back with, with a negative report. And jo Joshua and Caleb had, you know, they quieted. We know the story. They quieted the crowd and said, hey, man, we can't. The, the, these other guys were saying, look, we can't. We can't do it, man. They're, they're like, we're like grasshoppers, man. They're, we're little. They're, they're huge. And we can't do this. We can't do it. And then, you know, of course, we know Joshua and Caleb quietens everybody now and says, look, we can, we can do this. God said we can do it. We can do it. Anyway, so all of this, and this is kind of where it, where it kind of goes south a little bit for Moses and a lot of the other people. So God causes them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And I have to believe, I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure, I've never really looked at but I'm pretty sure about this, that when they would wander, wonder how close they came to the promised land every time they made a circle. I wonder, could they see it? Every time they made a little loop, made this big circle, wonder how many times they could see it. And Joshua and Caleb had to make this circle with them. And they would make that circle around this when they would wander. And look, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. But I wonder how many times they would make this circle. And, they're, and, and it, it's so close. What I'm getting at is how many times have you come that close? So close you could see it to your dream, to what God has promised you. Now, here's what I want you to remember. We're gonna, we, I'm, I'm, I'm about to wrap up here in just a second. Here's what I want you to remember. When you leave here this morning, if you've got something that God has spoken to you, whether it's over your children, whether it's over you yourself, whether it's over family, whether it's over this church, no matter, no matter what it is, and it could be all of those, no matter what, here's what I want you to remember. When it feels like nothing's going to happen, it's too, been too long, man. It's been too long. We're in year 38. Running, wandering around in this wilderness. Nothing's going to happen, man. He said we was going in. Nothing's going to happen. It's not going to happen. Go ahead. This is what I want you to remember. This. All right, y'all come on up. Keep playing. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you, if, if it's you, no, it doesn't matter if it's you or not because it is you. Stand up. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to, everybody just come up here. Come up here. This is our altar call. Come in. Just come on. If it doesn't pertain to you, maybe it will one day. Come on up here. All right. So imagine Moses is dragging this old cart around with the bones of Joseph in it. And just when he thinks He's frustrated. He's down on his luck. This is not going to happen. Come on. Come on. Make your way up here. It's okay. It's all right. We're not going to embarrass anybody. Now, I'm going to read this passage. I'm going to read the whole thing. And you're going to, I know some of you are going to say, well, that don't have anything to do with what you're talking about. It doesn't, but it does. It does, in a way. Okay? All right? Go ahead, Levi.
All right? This is Ezekiel. This is what I want you to remember. When you think the bones are dead, your dream is dead, it's, not, it's, it's over with. It's been 38 years, 20 years. Go ahead, Tracy. It's been forever since God spoke this to me. I'm not, I don't even know if it's true or not anymore. I don't even know if it's real. I want you to remember that cart with those dead bones of Joseph. It said, the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. And it was full of what? Dry bones. It was full of dry bones. And he caused me to pass among them and round about. And behold, there was there were very many on the surface of the valley. And lo, they were very dry, very dead, very long gone. And he said to me, and this is what God's speaking to you. This is what I really believe this. And I, this is what... This is, can it quiet down just a tad? Then we'll get back up with it. No, keep playing. Well, y'all don't, don't lose the moment. About two weeks ago, I believe it was, I think you spoke. On Wednesday? No, no, Pastor Mike spoke. Because he had called me. And he said, hey man, I'm not feeling good. And I really, you know, I'm just be on standby. It was on Wednesday. And I... And I said, okay, reluctantly, I, you know, I didn't, I mean, it was like a Monday or Tuesday, and I was like, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really want to do it. So I hung up with him, and as the day went on, and I, I thought to myself, that I, I, this was on my mind, this right here. And I thought, well, I'm just going to, I think I'm going to call him and tell him, I'll just do it. You know, whether you're sick or not, I'll just, I'll just do it if you want me to. And then I, but I backed out because I was like, ah, I'm lazy. I'm, I don't want to do it. But I backed out, and then from that point on, it's just kind of been on my mind, this, 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 this right here, okay? So that's how strongly I kind of feel about this. And what God wants to do is resurrect some dead things in your life. He wants to raise up some things that have long gone that you don't even maybe remember anymore. All right, let's see where I was at. Y'all can bring it back up just a little bit. So he said, son of man, can these bones live? And this is what I, this is what I was getting at. This is what he's asking you. Can this dream live? He's asking you that. He knows. Can this live? Can this dream live? And, he, and I answered and said, Oh Lord, only you know. And again he said, Prophesy over these bones. You have a part to play. You got to speak over that dream. Speak over those kids. Speak over those family members. Speak over those situations. Speak over those, uh, those things that you know that God has spoken to you. It's, it, we have a responsibility to speak over things and cause them. We have resurrection power. The Bible says if that same spirit lives in you that raised Christ from the dead, then what will it do? It will quicken you, your mortal body. Okay, again he said, uh, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, that you may come to life, and I will put sinew on you, and I will make flesh grow back on you. I will cover you with skin, I will put breath in you, that you may come alive, and you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, as, and... Uh, I, so I prophesied, and as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. It says, as I prophesied, there was a noise. Now, now catch this part of that. God said, say to these bones. He didn't say within your power, but he said, say to these bones, prophesy to these bones in the name of the Lord. Okay, so it's not us. It's that that lives in us. Okay? He said, prophesy to these bones. And then he says, okay, this starts happening. You know, they started getting flesh and muscle and all of these things start to happen. And then he said, I heard the sound. 
I heard the sound. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise makes a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. He said, Behold, there was a noise, and behold, rattling. Bones came together. Bone into bone. And I looked, and behold, sinew was on them. The flesh grew, skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones. We're not quite finished. That bone, is the, the dream's starting to rattle a little bit, but it's not quite there yet. So we know all of those, you know, we, can, we start speaking these things. Lord, I'll speak over my kids. I know what you said. I know what you told me. That but this was going to, my kids were going to, they were going to live for you. They were going to serve you all the days of their life. I know what you, I know what your word says. I know that what you have. I know the plans you have for me, says the Lord. I know what you're going to do. That there was no bread. This is the sound of them dry bones rattling. This is the praise makes the dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and breathe on these slain that they would come to life. So I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath came into them. And they, and they came to life. They stood on their feet, and they were an exceeding great army. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do that song. We'll start at the beginning of it. And we're going to do that and while we sing this song. All you have, you don't need anybody to lay hands on you. I mean, I believe in laying on hands. That's not where I'm going with this. You just start prophesying over those dead dreams. And all that means, all that means, you know, sometimes prophecy gets a, it gets a negative connotation sometimes. All this means is I'm speaking what's not into existence. If I believe that, that God has the power to raise Jesus from the dead, then I believe God has the power to speak over a dead dream and cause that thing to live again. Amen? Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment. The Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Oh, this is the praise makes a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire, stirring something new. You're not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. Yeah, resurrection power. Yeah. 
believe that. Man, we all we all need it. All of us. Amen. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God who brings dead things to life. Lord. Whether it's dreams, whether it's visions, Lord, those things that we thought doesn't don't exist anymore. We don't even remember them hardly. There's just a faint memory. Lord, you cause those bones to rattle, Lord. Cause those bones to rattle, Lord. Resurrect the things that have been spoken over this church in the name of Jesus, Lord. Restore lives, Lord. Restore those things, Lord, that were dead. Lord, I speak over, and this is really one of the things that I, man, it just was on my heart, is I speak over people's children. I speak over the prodigals, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Those that have maybe wandered away, I speak over those to come home. Come home. Come home in the name of Jesus. To the Father, where there's provision, protection, joy, peace, all those things that we need. Speak to the wayward children. Come home. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for it. I thank you. Lord. Lord, as we leave here, Lord, stir up those things in us, Lord. Stir up those things that lay dormant in our lives, Lord, that you've placed there. The things that are in our spirit, Lord, that we've let just kind of over time and over just the fact that they haven't happened yet we've caused them to we've we've let them just settle and not not be alive anymore rattle those bones Lord. rattle those bones I thank you for it Lord as we leave we don't want to forget Lord to, we lift up our pastor and sister Tarina Lord bless them and Lord, we just love you as we go, Lord. Our, your presence is with us, and we thank you for that. Lord, Lord we again, we thank you for resurrecting those things in our life that need resurrecting. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Do whatever you want to do. It was great. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Snap your fingers some. Remember the sermon. <laughs>